Welcome back to our channel, where we explore fascinating historical figures and delve into their intriguing stories. Today, we're taking a closer look at two influential figures from ancient Judea, Annas and Caiaphas. These prominent religious leaders held positions of power during a time of Roman occupation and religious fervor. As tensions between Jesus and the religious establishment grew, Annas and Caiaphas found themselves at the center of a pivotal moment in history. But what were their roles in the events surrounding the arrest and trial of Jesus? We'll examine their role in the arrest, interrogation, and eventual crucifixion of Jesus, shedding light on the motivations and political pressures they faced. But what happened to Annas and Caiaphas after Jesus' crucifixion? We'll uncover the fate of these influential figures and the impact they had on the early Christian movement. Join us as we journey through the annals of history, exploring the lives and death, actions, ultimate destinies, and discover the complex dynamics between religion and politics in ancient Jerusalem. So, if you're curious about the religious and political landscape of ancient Judea and the roles these figures played in shaping history, then this video is for you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell, so you don't miss out on our upcoming videos. Now, let's dive into the intriguing story of Annas and Caiaphas and unravel the mysteries of their lives. But first, let us ask you this. Can you imagine the complexities of being a religious leader during a time of foreign occupation? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's get started. Annas served as a prominent religious leader in the Sanhedrin. He was the son of Set and was designated as the high priest during the period of 6 to 15 AD by the Roman official Quirinus. However, he was later removed from his position by the Roman procurator Valerius Gratus, who then appointed his son-in-law Caiaphas as the new high priest. Subsequently, Annas witnessed several members of his family achieving success as high priests. The Roman presence in Judea introduced a governing system that severely restricted the authority of local leaders. This created a complex dynamic between the Jewish religious leaders, who were responsible for maintaining order in the Jerusalem temple, and the Roman authorities, who aimed to maintain political control and peace. The temple held immense significance as the spiritual and religious center of Jewish life, attracting numerous pilgrims each year for sacrifices and religious obligations. Consequently, controlling the temple carried great symbolism and political value. Amidst the Roman occupation and heightened religious fervor, Annas and Caiaphas emerged as influential religious leaders. Both belonged to the powerful Sadducees sect, which differed from the Pharisees in their interpretation of scriptures. For instance, the Sadducees rejected the notions of resurrection and the spiritual realm, while the Pharisees embraced these beliefs. The Sadducees, often affluent, acquired influential positions through their ties with the Romans. The chief priests and high priests were predominantly Sadducees, resulting in Annas and Caiaphas, as members of this sect, attaining the positions of high priests. This bestowed upon them central roles in Jewish religious life, along with authority over temple affairs. The relationship between the Jewish and Roman religious leaders was intricate and frequently strained. The Roman occupation bred fear of revolt and loss of privileges among the Jewish population. This underlying tension helps contextualize the actions and choices of Annas and Caiaphas, particularly their involvement in the arrest and trial of Jesus. With this historical backdrop in mind, we will delve further into the identities of Annas and Caiaphas. Annas assumed the role of high priest around 6 AD, during the tenure of Quirinus, the governor of Syria, and held the position until approximately 15 AD. During his tenure as high priest, Annas implemented a hereditary system of appointment within his own family, ensuring a continuous lineage of religious power. His control over the high priesthood granted him significant influence within the Jerusalem temple. 
This position not only made him a religious leader but also a prominent political figure, as the temple held immense power and authority in Jewish society. Annas also exerted control over the temple tax and currency exchange. In Luke 19 verse 45, Jesus is depicted expelling them from the temple, accusing them of turning it into a den of thieves and corrupting the true essence of religion. The business of selling animals and exchanging money within the temple was highly lucrative, making it the most prosperous trade in the city. The Jewish Talmud even denotes Annas's household as accursed, describing them as wealthy and unscrupulous, alongside other corrupt leaders of the priesthood who defiled the sacred sanctuary. This condemnation may have been a result of Annas's involvement in plotting persecution. On the other hand, Caiaphas, who was married to Annas's daughter, belonged to a wealthy and aristocratic family. Like his father-in-law, Caiaphas assumed a leadership position in the Jerusalem temple and held influence over the broader Jewish community. The relationship between Annas and Caiaphas was noteworthy and significant. Although Annas was no longer the high priest at the time, his influence remained palpable. By marrying Annas's daughter, Caiaphas became part of a priestly dynasty that wielded considerable control over religious and political matters in Judea. One of Caiaphas's famous phrases in the biblical narrative occurred after Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. The news of this miracle reached the council, and during their deliberation, Caiaphas posed the well-known question found in the Gospel of John 11 verses 49 to 50, You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. This statement by Caiaphas alluded to the belief that Jesus' death would prevent a revolt and safeguard the interests of the Jewish religious leadership. It was almost like a prophetic declaration that Jesus would die not only for the nation but also to unite the scattered children of God. Following Caiaphas's declaration, the council unanimously agreed to have Jesus killed. Throughout Jesus' ministry, tensions between him and the Jewish religious leadership, predominantly represented by Annas and Caiaphas, steadily escalated. Jesus preached a religious reform that challenged certain teachings and practices established by the religious authorities of the time, leading to direct conflicts. It was within this context that Jesus was arrested and brought before the high priest for questioning. Initially, Jesus was presented before Annas and then before Caiaphas, who acted as the high priest at that time. These interrogations marked a pivotal moment in the biblical narrative. During the interrogations, Annas and Caiaphas sought evidence to support accusations of blasphemy and sedition against Jesus. However, Jesus remained mostly silent and did not mount a convincing defense. These interrogations ultimately resulted in the decision to send Jesus to the Roman governor Pontius Pilate for trial and condemnation. Importantly, Annas and Caiaphas actively participated in the decision to accuse Jesus and advocated for his crucifixion. Their political and religious influence significantly contributed to Jesus' subsequent crucifixion on Mount Golgotha. After the resurrection of Jesus, Caiaphas refused to accept evidence of his resurrection. Consequently, he imprisoned and sought to kill Peter and John. Additionally, Caiaphas played a role in the martyrdom of Stephen. He also authorized Saul, later known as Paul, to arrest any Christians found in Damascus. Caiaphas played a significant role in persecuting the followers of Jesus as he viewed them as a threat to the religious and political authority of that time. However, in approximately 36 AD, Caiaphas was removed from his position by Vitellius, the Roman governor of Syria. Around the same time, Pilate was also removed from his position. It is said that Caiaphas met a miserable death when he was killed and dragged away by the Romans during a Jewish revolt in 36 AD. In 1990, while constructing a road in Jerusalem, the tomb of Caiaphas and his family was discovered in a hidden cave on the slopes of the city. 
On the other hand, the high priest Annas reportedly died by banging his head against the walls after realizing that he had played a role in the death of the Messiah. As an additional note, Annas's grandson became the last high priest before the Romans destroyed the second temple in 70 AD. With the destruction of the temple, the Sadducees, who were closely associated with it, disappeared as a distinct group in history. However, the legacy of the Pharisees endured. In fact, the Pharisees were responsible for compiling the Mishnah, a significant document that ensured the continuation of Judaism beyond the Temple's destruction. This laid the foundation for contemporary Rabbinic Judaism. Thank you for watching, we hope you have gained insights into the Bible through this discussion. Please consider subscribing and clicking on the notification icon for future updates. Stay tuned for more episodes where we delve into critical issues found in the Bible. See you soon.